Hey y'all, happy Tuesday. So digging in again, moving a little bit further. And I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Where Jesus says here, we're not going to leave anything. We're, we're going to, we're going to dig in piece by piece. When he says, Behold, I've given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses and nothing in any way shall harm you. I want to be sure that we understand and that we know who the enemy is. Okay? That enemy is the devil. It is Satan. And there's... Uh, defines it as the most bitter enemy of the divine government. And so if you take for just thinking about, make an image of, say la, pause, meditate, however you want to look at it. So think about a government because that's what Jesus came to establish. He came to bring, to establish the kingdom of God. And then it would come, side note, which we talked about this past weekend, um, that the kingdom of God would come through us, that it is within us. So when you think about a kingdom, which we don't so much see right now in our governing societies, but the kingdom, all of the needs of the kingdom come through the king. The king is the source. He is the supply. He is the, I mean, this is not a a democracy, dictatorship. I mean, the word of the king is final authority. And so Jesus being the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And in Isaiah, uh, I believe it's Isaiah 9, this, it gives us a little glimpse of that. Let's just go there. We'll go where Holy Spirit says go. Um, 9-6, a verse you're all very familiar with. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from the latter time forth, even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. But the government shall be upon his shoulders and the, in the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. So Jesus is the one on whom the kingdom of God rests. And so this most bitter enemy of the divine government, the one who seeks at any cost and in all measures to destroy the government of Christ, the kingdom of which he operates in, which I'm going to I'm going to post this at some point in time. I was listening to a minister over the past week and he he was really moving in the spirit when he was preaching and he said you need to get rid of any theology any theology that ends with Jesus losing. Get rid of it. Get rid of any theology that ends with Jesus loses or any theology where Jesus loses. Jesus has already won. The end has already been declared from the beginning. And regardless of what we see with our natural eyes, Jesus has won. There's no question of it. He has won. And we, the church, true followers and believers in Jesus Christ, are not going out of here barely making it. The church triumphant is who will be called to meet Jesus Christ. The bride of Christ will not be one who's barely getting by, but a glorious church, a glorious bride. So don't be, don't feel like beaten, battered, weathered, and stormed, barely making it. But we are looking for an empowerment in the body of Christ where we were truly the biggest influx of souls that the kingdom of God has ever seen. So 
throw it out of your mind. Any theology that says we barely get by or any theology that says Jesus doesn't win, Jesus loses, throw it away. Scratch that because he has already won. Oh, glory to God. We'll pick it for tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye.